Hello everyone. Dynamic analysis covers a wide variety of simulations, some of which are long duration events such as a creep analysis and others are short durations like explosive detonation or a drop test simulation. There are numerous ways to solve this analysis and specific approaches are preferred in some circumstances to solve the model effectively and to avoid convergence issues. Two such important and widely used methods are the implicit and the explicit methods. The implicit method is typically used in long duration dynamic analysis and the explicit method is preferred for short duration dynamic analysis. Therefore, to perform a successful dynamic analysis, an analyst must be aware of these two methods, their differences and when it should be used. In this video, we will be talking about two important time integration methods, implicit and explicit methods while specifically focusing more on the explicit method. Ready? Let's get started. We know that for dynamic analysis, the time factor comes into play when solving the equation of motion. When we solve the dynamic problem as a time domain problem, the unknowns, acceleration, velocity and displacement are functions of time. This makes the equation of motion a second order ordinary differential equation, also called ODE with respect to time. Ideally, when we solve the equation of motion, we want to find the analytical expressions that represent deformation, velocity and acceleration for the entire continuous time period. However, for a nonlinear problem with such ODEs, solving the problem analytically is not possible and hence a numerical solution is essential. And to solve this ODEs, we need to divide time into finite number of time steps and solve the problem at these time points. We call this time integration method or time stepping. For solving the nonlinear ODEs of dynamic simulations, we have implicit and explicit time integration methods. Let us discuss them in further detail. For the implicit time integration method, let us consider the equation of motion again. Here at any value of t, this represents a set of static equilibrium equations with inertial forces and damping forces. For this, we use the Neumann method or HHT method to solve such differential equations. The implicit time integration method for dynamic problems has certain characteristics and properties. The variables at the current time step depend not only on values from the previous time step but also on the other variables at the current step. Hence, the implicit method requires solving a system of linear simultaneous equations. Iterations may be needed to achieve convergence and accuracy in each time step is achieved using a series of linear approximations like the newton raphson method. The implicit method requires an inversion of the nonlinear dynamic equivalent tangent stiffness matrix. This can require large amount of memory and may contribute significantly to the time required to complete the solution. For the implicit time integration method, the conversion tools are provided and the user may need to adjust them as required. Thus, the convergence in this method is not guaranteed, but when convergence is obtained, depending on the choices of the input parameters, the solution can be unconditionally stable. Now, let us discuss some characteristics and properties of the explicit time integration method. For this method, the equations become uncoupled and can be solved directly or say explicitly. Hence, iterations are not required and thus it does not need any convergence checks during the solution. Convergence is guaranteed unless energy errors occur during the simulation. Moreover, there is no need for the inversion of the stiffness matrix. All nonlinearities, including contact are included in the internal force vector. However, the solution could be unstable. It may need a condition for stability. To ensure stability, the time step size is limited by the CFL condition. 
the time step must be limited so that a stress wave cannot travel further than the smallest element characteristic length in a single time step. We recommend you refer to the lesson on time step in explicit dynamics for more information. Let us now understand the overall solution cycle for the explicit solution method. It is based on the central difference method of time integration. The solution starts with a mesh having assigned material properties and initial conditions. Then the strain rates, strains and stresses are calculated. This results in nodal forces for all nodes including external nodes. Finally, the external nodal forces are computed from the boundary conditions, loads and constraints. This is then added together with the internal nodal forces. The total nodal forces are divided by the nodal mass to produce nodal accelerations. Thus, at the time n, the acceleration can be noted as shown here. Here, P is a sum of external loads and body forces. F is an internal force. H is hourglass resistance and M is a diagonal mass matrix. Then the acceleration are integrated explicitly in time to produce new nodal velocities. We can see that the velocities at time n plus 1 by 2 can be noted as shown here. Next, the nodal velocities are integrated explicitly in time to produce new nodal positions, which produces deformation of the elements. The displacement at time n plus 1 can be noted as listed here. The element deformation results in a change in the volume and density of the material in each element. The deformation rate is used to derive strain rates. In the next step, the constitutive laws derive resultant stresses from the strain rates. And the stresses are transformed back into nodal forces using various element formulations. And thus, the solution cycle is repeated until the calculation end time is reached. In summary, let us compare what we have learned about the explicit and implicit time integration methods. When talking about convergence checks, the explicit method does not require any, whereas the implicit method requires convergence checks at each time step. The explicit method also does not need inversion of the stiffness matrix during solution, but for the implicit method requires the inversion of the nonlinear dynamic equivalent tangent stiffness matrix and thus making it computationally expensive as well. In the explicit method, the solution could be unstable and it needs a condition for stability of the solution. However, the implicit method is unconditionally stable for certain integration parameters. In the explicit method, the time step size is less than the current time step. That is the time it takes a sound wave to travel across an element. And the implicit method has no inherent limit on size of the time step. The explicit method is more accurate and efficient for simulations involving shock wave propagation, large deformations and strains, nonlinear material behavior with material failure, complex contact properties, fragmentation of the structure and non-linear buckling. It is preferable to use for short time duration events involving high non-linearity such as a drop test and a hypervelocity impact problem, whereas implicit is preferable for long duration with low non-linearity simulation problems such as creep. The typical industrial application of the explicit method are car crash simulation, drop test, Taylor impact, detonation or explosion, ballistics, etc. I hope you have found this video informative. Thank you for watching and do check out our other courses to discover more useful learning resources.